In this video, I'm going to focus on how you go about picking your U and DV in integration by parts. Now, before we start, I do want to make note of this warning. All right, no matter what technique I demonstrate or show in this video, there's no technique that is absolutely perfect. All right, so there are exceptions to absolutely every acronym that you might be given for this picking the U and DV part. All right, and so it's going to go along, it's going to work really good, and then all of a sudden you're going to come up with a problem where it doesn't work. All right, so you just need to remember that sometimes you're going to have to just do something that is completely different. All right, you've just got to, if you try it and it doesn't work, then pick something else and see if then the integration by parts doesn't get a little bit simpler. All right, um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to start here with the most common acronyms. All right, most of the, the ones that you are taught in class, um, focus on choosing your U first, which is choosing the part that you're going to be taking that um, derivative of. All right, there are three different ones here, and all of them are common, and depending on your particular professor or your particular textbook, would depend on which one you're going to see. All right, major differences, uh, depending on how they were trying to make the acronym, the polynomial function and the algebraic function are the exact same thing. They've just used, called it a different name so that it would fit in the acronym a little bit better. All right, other major differences. All right, depending on which method you've got, there's some debate about whether you should pick your logarithmic or your inverse function for your U which one should really go first. All right, and then there's also some debate about, well, do you really pick your exponential before trig, or do you pick your trig before an exponential? All right, so just a nice little variety there. Um, and there again, like I said, sometimes this one works better, sometimes this one works better, sometimes this acronym works better. So it's just a matter of, as you work out the problem, you see which one's gonna work for you, okay? Or the particular problem that you are working on. All right, now. The next thing I thought I would focus on is some just general, um, good general suggestions on this. Um, so we'll just take all three of these here and take a look at them here. Your inverse trig functions and your logarithmic functions are usually placed in U because we don't learn basic integration formulas for them. All right, so you're going to want something that you're going to be able to easily work with. Being able to take the derivative there is just going to be so much easier. All right. Um, your logarithmic functions are generally best to derive, especially if they're paired with polynomials, okay? So again, it's just a suggestion, and it could possibly be that if you've got a polynomial and a logarithmic function, you know, you could go ahead and put that polynomial in your derivative. Just really depends on how the problem works out. All right, second general good suggestion here. Algebraic functions can be placed in either U or DV because we can integrate them or we can differentiate them. All right, now, of course, it's usually preferably, uh, preferable to use them in the U since they become smaller when we differentiate. All right, so hopefully you're at this point, you understand, you know, you got that algebraic function, you take the derivative, take the derivative, take the derivative, it just keeps getting smaller. All right, so that's going to be something that we're going to look for and find very useful. The last one here, um, trigonometric functions like your sine and cosine are often placed in the DV um, because they don't get any more complicated when you integrate them, okay? Um, this is the same true for that exponential function. So really, if you had like say an e to the x and a sine, you can put the sine in the, the dv, but you could also put the e to the x in the dv because it really, they don't get more complicated when you integrate them, so it really doesn't matter which one you put there. All right, so just three general suggestions that I have found to be good pieces of advice if you are still needing something more than just an acronym. All right, now I also thought I would take a look at a lesser common acronym. All right, you can find this on the internet if you, you Google it. Um, so it's, it's not not taught. It's just usually not one that is readily taught, okay? Um, a different approach would be to think of it as, okay, integration is harder than differentiation. So it makes sense if you focus on picking your DV first. All right, this acronym, all right, is called DETAIL. Kind of easy to remember there. That first D just stands for DV is the first of your exponential function, your trig function, your algebraic function, your inverse trig, and your logarithmic. All right, I have started using this a little bit more, teaching it a little bit more, and kids seem to like it. Okay, so 
this one is different than the first three in the sense that this is focusing on, well, what part are you going to set for dv? All right, what part do you want to integrate? Okay, which one's going to be the easiest one to integrate first? Okay, so what I thought I would do is I would actually do some examples because I've been doing a lot of talking so far in this video. We'll do some examples and we'll actually implement this uh, detail acronym since it's less common. Okay, so I went ahead and put that detailed acronym here, assuming that we don't quite have it memorized yet. All right, so we've just got a little, um, few little integrals here that we're not actually going to completely do integration by parts for. We're just going to focus on that, picking that dv and, and um, u part. Okay, so in this first example, I'm integrating x squared cosine x dx. Okay, so my dv is the first up. Okay, so I'm going to be hunting for my dv. So I'm just going to go down my list. I'm going to look for an exponential function. Okay, I do not have an exponential function, so then I'm going to go to the next one. Trig function, I do have a trig, so I'm going to let my dv be cosine x dx, and then that means my u has to be everything that's left, which would be that x squared. Okay, so pretty straightforward. All right, in the second example here, I'm going to be doing the integral of the square root of x, natural log of x dx. All right, so again, I want to start with my dv. All right, and I'm going to see, is there an exponential function? Nope, no exponential function. Is there a trig function? Nope. Do I have an algebraic function? Yep, that square root of x is an algebraic function, so I'm going to do square root of x dx. That's going to leave the u being the natural log of x. So, so far pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at this one, the integral of x squared e to the x dx. Alright, so we'll start with that dv. Exponential, I do have an exponential function, that e to the x, so I'm going to let that be e to the x dx, and my u then will be the x squared. Now, taking a look at this one, I've got the integral of the inverse sine of x dx. All right, now at first glance, you're going to think, well, I don't have two things. I'm not multiplying by two things here. All right, however, um, you can still use integration by parts when you have a single um, type of function here because in those cases, almost always, um, your dv is going to be dx or 1 dx, and then you're going to allow that u to be your inverse sine of x. Okay, um, going through, if you actually did look at this, all right, do you have an exponential? No. Do you have trig? No. Do you have your algebraic? No. Do you have an inverse trig? Yes. Okay, now, I wouldn't want to do that for my dv, all right, but doing this the other way for the other acronyms, you're going to hit that, so that can be what you're going to be integrating. Um, so here's another one, um, integral of natural log of x dx. Again, um, I've only got one function there, so you're going to start out with that dv eating, equaling your dx, or 1 dx, so that that u can be your natural log of x. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Um, I've got the integral of x to the third e to the x squared dx. All right, so if I'm going down through here and I look at this, okay, exponential, all right, well, some people are going to look at that and say this is exponential. Other people won't, but for the most part, I don't know, your x is in your exponent, so exponential. So you might try dv equals e to the x squared dx. All right, that would make your u x to the third. All right, now, since I'm not actually working this out, you're not going to see how this is going to become messy and it's, it's not going to work really nice. Okay, but this would be a scenario where you follow the list, you start working it out, and then you're thinking, hmm, maybe this isn't such a good idea. All right, so in that case, then, you just need to try something else. All right, what works nicely on this one is letting your dv equal to x e to the x squared and letting your u be an x squared. All right, so basically just taking that x to the third and dividing it up differently. So that is, you know, what the first suggestion was, you know, when you try the acronym and something doesn't work, then be willing to consider regrouping them differently, picking something different for dv and something different for u. You probably are not going to get it right off the bat. Okay, you might have to try several Okay, but persistence will usually win out on this. 
All right, so for this last one, we've got the integral of e to the x sine x dx. All right, if I do go down my list here and I look for that exponential function, I have an exponential function, so I could do dv is equal to e to the x dx, and then I could do u is equal to sine x. All right, now, notice that this is a trig and this is exponential, and then there's that exponential and trig um, scenario that we were talking about. A lot of those first three switched these two around. All right, so on this one, because of the way you integrate and you take the derivative of both of these two functions, technically you could have said dv is going to be your sine x dx, and you could have let your u be e to the x. Either one, the same scenario happens, and so you're going to get, you're going to be able to arrive at the answer regardless of the way you pick this. All right, so there is just a few um, examples worked out of just the picking of the dv and the u. All right, now, um, from here, I would actually like to go one step farther into a conceptual understanding. All right, so, um, in all honesty, understanding why you make the choice that you do is more important than following any of those acronyms that I've just uh, given you. All right, there's two major concepts that once you understand them, then honestly, I think you'd be ready for a shortcut method in your integration by parts. Those two major concepts are once you understand that repeated differentiation brings a polynomial to zero, all right, that, that's crucial for your shortcut method in integration by parts. You take that polynomial and you just keep taking the derivative, taking the derivative over and over and over, and eventually you're going to hit zero. All right, another major concept is how trig derivatives repeat. If you understand how trig derivatives will repeat, you know, maybe with just some alternating of those uh, positive and negative signs, then you can relate your current integral, whatever integral you're trying to work out, to a later integral that you're going to encounter while working out the problem. All right, once you have those two concepts mastered, okay, it really is, um, a, would be worth your time to look at a shortcut method. Lots of different places on the internet talks this about a tabular method. They call it the Hindu method. They call it the DI method. All right, and you can definitely take a look at the video uh, that I have on that video. And you can watch it right here. Um, but it, it makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier. And will it work for absolutely every integral? Mm, probably not. Sometimes I've tried that shortcut method, and it's totally just makes it a lot harder. So if that's the case, then you go back to the long way of doing that integration by parts because you fully understood it. So everything is good. Uh, but definitely check that out. And if the videos are helping you, uh, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks.